Okay, let's talk about this pen. This is, depending where you come from, either called the Pilot Varsity or the Pilot V Pen. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only truly disposable fountain pen in the world. And when I mean disposable fountain pen, I really do mean disposable because this pen, there is no way that you can refill it. There's no cartridges, there's no converter. There's no way that you can take this pen apart. Once you use the ink up in it, you have to throw it away. And to be honest, I'm not really a fan of this method or the concept of fountain pens. Yes, you have your usual pens that you'll just use up and throw away. But you don't do that with fountain pens. Why fountain pens? Because, no, seriously, this is a sort of cheap pen. But what happens if I went ahead and got like my Parkers and everything and my, my Watermans and I was like, oh, this pen's out of ink. Now it's time to throw it away and get another one. No, you don't do that because well, fountain pens can be uh, refilled and all that. And I'm not a fan of doing this. You know, yes, it is a cheaper pen, but I'm still not a fan of doing it with a cheaper pen. Now, this pen does cost $5, so it is a lot cheaper than the other pens that I'm talking about. But for that same $5, you could get a Jinhao, or if you're lucky, maybe score a Pilot pen, or maybe even a used fountain pen that comes with a converter which you can refill with ink. I'm not really a fan of spending all that money only to use it up and then throw it away. Now, this does make a very good starter pen, and coming from personal experience, this was actually the first fountain pen that I ever used. I know I said the Pilot 78G was the first pen that I bought, but this is the first fountain pen that I actually used. I found it in a drawer, and thankfully, it was still filled with a little bit of ink, so I was able to use it, then go ahead, buy a pen, fountain pen a few months later, and bam, here we are in 2016. So, as a starter pen, this is actually all right, but if you are planning on getting more fountain pens or have used fountain pens, just I wouldn't recommend this as a good pen to buy. Um, the only good thing about this pen is you do get Pilot's legendary quality control, and if you were thinking of buying maybe a Jinhao or a Bayo or something, you do run the risk of getting a crappy nib, a pen that hasn't gone through quality control. With this pen, you're most likely, well, pretty much guaranteed to get a good pen. All right, and as always, let's get into some of the specs of the pen. So capped, this pen will be 13 centimeters long. Uncapped, it's gonna be 11.2 centimeters long. And posted, it's gonna be, be about 14.6 centimeters long. So pretty much, if you choose to hold it um, without the cap on, yes, you can hold it, but um, the way that I view it is, this is pretty much the limit of how short a fountain pen can be. It's just on that limit, and I pretty much recommend you to post the pen. Um, posting the pen will also increase the weight of the pen. Um, it's not saying much. This pen without the uh, cap on is going to be about 7 grams, and adding the cap is only going to be about 3 grams. So everything all in all is going to be about 10 grams. Now, for someone who likes heavier pens, this is light, but if you don't use fountain pens and if you um, are used to saying, used to using, say, rollerballs or something, this is actually going to be very, very familiar to you. And a pen that I will definitely compare it to is this, the Uniball Insight, because this is a pen that I see absolutely everywhere in Australian stores. It's everywhere. Heaps of people have them. And when you look at it, it is very, very similar to um, the Pilot um, in terms of shape, size, and everything, even down to the cap length, it's a very, very similar pen. So if you're using this pen a lot um, and just want to use, say, a fountain pen, maybe to sign a document or something, you can pretty easily um, switch to the fountain pen and use it because grip is pretty much the same, weight is the same. The only thing that you'll have to adjust is make sure you hold the nib um, you know, up, you know, the breather hole up. But even on this pen, it doesn't really matter if you have a bit of an angle because this pen's pretty forgiving. But I'll um, get into that later on. 
Now, let's look at the body of the pen. Um, it's the thing that I'm not so happy about the pen, well, as well as it being disposable. Um, I don't think it looks amazing. It looks cheap. Now, yes, it is cheap, but I wish they hadn't made it look so bad. Like, I know you're pretty much limited in what you can do, but just things like um, this barcode that... I, well, I thought it was a sticker when it came, but you'll see that you can't actually take it off because it's printed on. And I just think that's annoying. And compared to other cheaper pens, say, you know, Jinhao, this pen was cheaper than this pen. This pen looks a lot nicer. And, you know, if I want to spend money on a fountain pen, you know, considering that it looks like this, I'd much rather buy this pen, even though that there is a risk of the pen coming a bit defective. That being said, it does feel well built. Other cheaper fountain pens, um, you know, such as the Heroes, always say that they feel cheap, they use crappy plastic, and that's right. But this pen, solid plastic, feels robust as this one. These pens don't break. Really, really good. Now, if you look right here, I don't know if you can see in the light, there you go. There is an ink window, which you can see, you know, how much ink there's left and everything. Now, the ink window goes all the way up here, but annoyingly, when I received this pen, the ink was bloody all the way down here. The bastards hadn't even filled the whole thing up, which I found was particularly annoying. So you don't really get a 100% fill. Now, when, I, when you get one of these rollerball pens, it's, it's all filled up to the top. So, just one thing I want to pick out with Pilot. Um, yeah. Now, the last thing I want to say is, um, factoring in ink and all that, I expect this pen to last quite a while, just because it's a red pen, and I don't use red pen all that much. When I had the blue version of this pen, when I first had fountain pens and all that, um, I believe that pen lasted for about two weeks, and it was a bit used already. So, if you're using a fountain pen every day, do choose to get one of these pens. If you're using it a lot, expect it to last, say, two to three weeks max. Maybe even less. I don't know. I'm not you. I don't know. Test it out. Okay, let's talk about the nib. And I don't really have much to talk about the nib. You know, if I could sum this nib up into a short sentence, I'd really just say this is the bland curry of nibs. It really is. It's bland. That's what it is. It's bland, according to Gordon Ramsay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this is a fountain pen nib. It's better than a ballpoint by a thousand country miles, but if you're using a pen, say, I don't know, this rollerball, you might not be 100% convinced that this is a worthwhile step up. It might not be worthwhile spending $50, $60 to get a fountain pen, and you might be convinced that you might want to stay on, say, a rollerball. And, well, using this pen, and say using a Parker, or even a cheaper Bayhaw pen, you'd, you'd see that it is an amazing step up. But with this pen, not so much. And that's pretty much the thing that I have with this nib. It's bland. Yes, it works. There's, you know, it's springy nib. It doesn't railroad. It doesn't do anything. But there's no character to it. There's no line variation. Um, pretty much on all sides, it's going to feel exactly the same. Reverse writing feels the exact same as writing like this. It's very, very... Bland. Now, the size that you're gonna that you're gonna get with it is a size medium, um, and for some reason, there's no iridium ball on this nib that I'm aware of. It's sort of, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's sort of like a triangle shape, but it's not an iridium ball. I can tell you that. And well, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just boring. Um, as well as that, the the hole, the breather hole, as well as the uh, most of the tines has not been cut. The tines have been, have been cut in by about one or two millimeters, but the rest of it has yet to be cut, which I find odd, but huh, it's 
bland. It works. It's not amazing. And feed, yeah, there's no removing the feed or anything. No chance at all. All right, writing sample with the Pilot V pen. Remember, Pilot Varsity, depending which country you are in here, Pilot V pen. See, Pilot V pen. So, ink, uh, it's red. It's not Orochizuku, unfortunately, but this will do. And the nib is, uh, it's medium ish mish okay let's do a writing sample Amulet. okay so as you can see it's very very uniform throughout it's not amazing um, yeah, nothing really amazing about it. There's no skipping, though there is no line variation. Uh, wetness-wise, it does lay down a decent patch of ink. Um, though it's not that wet, if I'm honest. Let me try again. I thought it was wetter than that. There we go. So, wetness or anything, that's not really an issue that you're going to have. Um, in terms of lines, these strokes going, um, this way are going to be a tiny little bit thicker than down strokes, but only just by a little bit. Um, and in terms of actual line variation, you're not going to get much. So if I just, um, uh, no pressure at all, and this is with full pressure, you're not going to get much line variation there. Um, something that is annoying is this feed is very, very... Uh, this feed is very, very close to the end of the nib, and if you push down hard enough, you might get... There. Do you see that right here? That is the feed hitting the paper. If you're unlucky enough to get it, it might make some small handwriting look pretty bad. Um, in terms of reverse writing, feels pretty much exactly the same. You're not going to get much line variation here. As I said, it does feel like a fountain pen nib, just not a very good one. Well, it's not terrible, but it's just bland. Okay, so pros. What do I like about this pen? Um, well, this is a good starter pen. For a lot of people, this could be their first fountain pen. Well, me included. Um, it was all right, I didn't think it was amazing, but it did show me that, well, it was a lot easier on my wrist and everything to use a fountain pen and all that, and it showed me that I should probably go invest in more, a lot more, and then you bankrupt yourself. Huh. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Um, as well as that, the price, yeah, five dollars if you're not ready to invest in fountain pens if you're not ready to, to fork out 50 bucks for a pen and you just want to try fountain pens this could really be your option i still recommend go for a jinhao but you also then have to buy ink or cartridges so this might be your best bet and i also got to say this is pretty comfortable to hold um if you are transitioning from a pen like this or even a ballpoint it is very comfortable and familiar to hold Okay, what do I not like about this pen? Uh, okay, so it's disposable. Yes, I know it's cheap, it's made by Pilot, you know, it's... I really do wish that they had made it just able to be fit refilled. Yes, I know there's a way to refill it by hacking a syringe, but then you do risk it exploding in your face and everything. I'm not happy that they made it 
pretty much impossible to refill, considering that a pen that only costs about three or four dollars more is able to re be refilled, just why pile it? Just, ugh. You know, even a cheaper pen, Hero, this can be refilled, that's a dollar. Um, Platinum Preppy, very similar price, that can be refilled. Um, Bayor 388, that can be refilled. Hero, oh. Hero, there it is, can be refilled. Just why? I don't like the fact that there are other pens, very similar price, that can be refilled. It's incredibly annoys annoying. Um, as well as that, the pen, you know, I don't like the look of it, especially the barcode. I think barcodes ruin a lot of pens. It's ugly. This pen doesn't have to have a bloody barcode on it. Ugh. Um, and I'm not a fan of, of, I'm, and I'm not a fan of the feed hitting the paper. I think that's pretty goddamn annoying.